Hi, my name is Art and welcome to another Bump by video. A few weeks ago I posted a video of my yellow fog light collection, at least that's what I thought I did. While editing that video I already found out that I made a mistake with the designation of some of these CB fog lights. As I was confused around the naming scheme of them, I did some research and found out that I was wrong. I also messed up that some of them weren't actually fog lights, but auxiliary lights. In this series of videos I will do a deep dive into the world of these French yellow auxiliary lights, clear up which fog lights actually are and which aren't, and which ones were used in the initial D manga and anime. And in this first episode I'll do a primer on the auxiliary lights and explain the origins of the yellow fog lights. Many producers of auxiliary lights, yellow or not, like Bosch and Hella exist, but well, most of the yellow ones are produced by CB and SEV Marshall. And these two companies are French. Now, you may ask where do these yellow fog lights come from? Well, the light color is actually selective yellow, and that's a very specific color of yellow that you cannot well, it's really difficult to show it on RGB because it's a, it's a particular color that cannot be reproduced on a screen. The purpose is to uh, remove the short wavelength of blue and ultraviolet light and that's also why it's so difficult to show the exact color of the light. The short wavelength of blue and ultraviolet light creates glare in rain, fog and snow and this is not very good if you're driving uh, through a snowstorm and you get a lot of glare from your uh, headlights or uh, high beam or low beam. The yellow light of the fog lights is uh, reflected less by the water in uh, rain, fog and snow so therefore these lights are very suitable for that. Um, however, this comes at a cost where you lose about 15% of your light and this is compensated by the better visibility that you will have after you're using yellow instead of white color. So SEV Marshall made sure that the French government was aware of the benefits of yellow fog lights as they were producing them and the French government made them obligatory in 1936. Actually, they made it obligatory to have also the headlights in yellow. And this was supposed to be for better visibility, uh, but there's an urban legend that says that the French government actually wanted to distinguish French cars from foreign cars during wartime. Well, yeah, that's kind of under debate. You can just swap your bulbs or add some film layer on top of the headlights and you can confuse those French soldiers. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Well, what is making sense is that it remained obligatory in France up until 1993. And that's when the EU actually told them you actually have to use white headlights. Now don't worry about it, these yellow fog lights are still allowed to be used in Europe and also in the US. So now you may wonder about this CB and SEV Marshall companies that I've been talking about before. Well, these are two French companies that have been producing for a very long time these fog lights. And naturally they have spread all over the globe and they have sold it across the US, across Japan, well, they produce very similar products and naturally uh, somewhere in the 80s the two companies merged, but that's a very different story for another video and I will not go into a lot of detail here. Uh, just keep in mind the two are quite different and at the same time quite similar. You can see that these uh, SEV Marshall has a cat logo which makes them stand out and this was created when Pierre Marshall drove up to his house and saw his cat looking into the headlights. CB has an iote and number imprint in the middle of the fog light and that's how you can distinguish them. They're, they're slightly different but also the same. Uh, also these lights were extremely popular in racing so you will see them a lot. So you may ask what is iode or iodine? Well these uh, iodine quartz halogen bulbs uh, are used in H1, H2, H3, H4 uh, halogen bulbs that we are using for our cars nowadays. It's nothing fancy, it's just that back in the 70s, 60s, this was a whole new technology. 
Uh, most vintage CV lights use either H1 or H2 bulbs, so you can just use whatever you have at hand. Since I made a mistake with the auxiliary lights, I'm going to explain a bit more about uh, what's the differences between the various auxiliary lights. So there are three auxiliary lights that you can distinguish. That's a, a spot or pencil beam, that's a driving or spread beam, or that's the fork lights. So to start off with spot pencil beam, that's a thin long circular beam and it can uh, carry the light hundreds of meters or feet away. This is what for instance the police would use or hunters would use on their jeeps and then find some deer in the forest. Um, these lights actually have clear lenses, uh, sometimes they have a Fresnel reflector and these are not legal to be used on the road while driving. Then you have the driving and the spread beam. These are narrow long range beams, they carry over 100 meters, 300 feet that's what they actually illuminate. It can, it can even carry further, uh, but it's at least 100 meters. Uh, these are obviously uh, also clear lenses, sometimes also Fresnel reflectors. And these lights actually supplement high beam headlights. So on, on your car you have the high beam, which illuminates 100 meters away. These driving or spread beam lights actually increase the visibility for your beam headlights. They go further and wider than normal headlights. You can see that here in the spread pattern. Then we have fog lights. Fog lights have a short wide beam, 10 meters away, 30 feet in length. And of course the, the light travels further than this, but the, the, the majority of the spread will be 10 meters away. Um, these fog lights have actually a Fresnel lens. Um, they're, they're actually mounted below the headlights to make them as low as possible to be able to spread the light underneath the fog or underneath the rain. And sometimes they're also used as cornering lights because you can see a bit better in the corner next to you. And this is also why these fog lights are being used in the initial D manga. More about that in a later episode. Uh, they also work in tandem with your primary headlights. Uh, they're wider and closer than headlights, uh, so they illuminate a lot better. Now, then we have uh, the, the shapes of these fog lights. That's either uh, a round, a rectangular, or a light bar. And the, the round fog lights have been there since the 1920s. And these have been in various shapes and sizes, small, bigger. Uh, sometimes they have a nipple, but that's a, a whole different story. Uh, then we have the rectangular ones. That's uh, basically they were appearing in the 1960s and the typical shape we know today has formed in the late 70s. And then we have the light bar. The light bar has been around since the late 70s, early 80s, maybe 90s. And initially this was a set of driving or spotlights on a bar and then used for hunting. Uh, nowadays we have uh, LED power bars, which is a very long uh, LED light bar. And Noriyaro actually mounted one on his uh, drift car, and you can see a short clip of that here. Okay, that's about it. What I can uh, show you in this first episode. Um, I hope this primer was clear about the auxiliary lights, how they differ, and how, uh, what kind of types there are. And also uh, where the yellow lights come from. In the next episode, I will go more in depth on the CB fog lights and tell you exactly uh, what types there are. Uh, and I'm going to do another video on SEV Marshall. And I'm not sure whether that video will be preceded or succeeded by a video on the initial D fog lights. So that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Ponte.